We're a minute early. Welcome to live stream uh, today, everyone. Um, yeah, so uh, I thought I'd do something different. This was uh, suggested um, by a viewer, um, Oleski Lampy. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Um, he uh, commented on, I think, my last video um, that I should do a um, materials show and tell. Um, he also asked the question whether I do uh, uh, um, tube flies and that sort of thing. Uh, and unfortunately, no, I don't. Um, I, I occasionally tie doubles. I have some double hooks, but um, you know, tube flies just aren't all that popular here in the United States. So we don't uh, don't tie them very often. And I have I've never tied tube flies. Um, but yeah, so today we're going to do a material show and tell. Uh, I figured um, it was a great idea because uh, I'm I'm not going to be able to stream. Oop, am I in focus? No. Um, I'm not going to be able to stream for the next two weeks, so um, not too much sense in starting a, a new fly today, um, so we're going to do something a little different. Um, yeah, and I'll just uh, show my materials and um, hang out. Uh, let me see. Um, if you're new to the stream uh, and you actually want to see me tie a fly, uh, you can go back. Um, all the recordings of my previous streams are up on YouTube. Um, there's a playlist, live streams. Um, I'm actually, I've been toying with the idea of going back and deleting some of the older ones um, as I add new ones, uh, kind of keeping, capping the number of live streams in the, uh, um, in the, you know, playlist uh, at maybe like a you know, 20 or 30 um, just because you know some of the things they're not they're not great instructional videos um, but you know it's just a lot of chatting um, and besides some of the older ones were shot with a much older webcam um, and uh, are not of not the same uh, visual quality uh, kind of the other thing that um, uh, is driving that is, you know, some of the things we talk about, especially in terms of like world events and that sort of thing are a little out of date. Um, so yeah, so I've been, um, I, I think I'm going to trim those down and also, you know, because I'm on a free YouTube account, um, I don't know if there are limits, but you know, I, I do just kind of want to keep that all uh, neat and tidy. Uh, so yeah, so, um, thanks for hanging out with me this weekend. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll get into it. Uh, but first off, um, if you enjoy what you see here, want to see more of my work, uh, you can check out my Instagram at justwondering.brad. Uh, and if you uh, want to purchase any of the flies that you've seen me tie uh, here on the channel, uh, you can check out my Etsy shop, at Studio 1213 on Etsy. So here we go. Um, and I'm going to see if we can. Dusk, light and hopefully focus. So the first thing that um, I guess we'll just go through, uh, actually, oops. So, uh, sorry. Um, I just wanna show how I store my materials. Oops. Uh, so I have this machinist chest uh, that I use for all, basically all my storing most of my materials except for the large feathers. Um, it has these nice pull out drawers that I can put stuff in um, it's, uh, it, you know, it's super nice. Um, it's a little beat up now, uh, cause it just goes in my trunk, uh, when I drive to a show, um, it's convenient if it doesn't fit in here. Um, and if it doesn't fit in my, uh, feather holder, it doesn't come to a show with me. Um, so everything goes in there or, um, in my feather organizer. That being said, um, for the larger feathers that won't fit in the uh, machinist's chest, I use a file organizer. Um, this is just a, a, for, for organizing papers or files like you would find in an office. Um, right now they're all bagged uh, just out of convenience, but uh, this is a really easy way to, to keep my feathers, uh, you know, from being squished, uh, especially during transport. It goes into a tote bag um, with kind of the 
you know, other miscellaneous things that I need for, for shows, um, like my, like my, uh, pattern books or, you know, um, uh, display type things. Uh, so this is what I take with me. Um, in addition to the machinist chest, this is how I store all of my materials. Uh, of course, when I go to a show, some other things come with me. Um, I've got, um, I've got these, uh, displays, um, these are poured resin displays. Uh, this is just a prototype that I, I, or this is one of the first things I poured. It's just, just got a um, jungle clock feather in it. Uh, use this to display. Um, I'm not super happy with how this turned out, but it looks nice. Um, makes a nice paperweight. Um, I also tried a little like river scene, but as you can see, uh, I had to pour it in multiple layers and um, you can see the uh, the seam where the, the layers interacted. Um, I don't have a vacuum chamber, so these things are full of bubbles. Uh, it's just the way it is, uh, but they're cool. Um, that's pretty much it for what I t uh, take with me to shows besides, you know, books that you can see here. Um, I also have these beautiful um, dusty um, stands for, for flies. Uh, these were a gift to me, uh, when I did the fly tying show back when it was in Winston-Salem. And, um, unfortunately I don't remember the guy's name. His first name was Mike. Um, we were, uh, we were at the show together. Um, I think neighboring booths and he, uh, he was very kind enough to give me a couple of these. So this, these are also what I use for displaying flies when I'm at the shows. And then, of course, I use my magnetic cigar box display cases, display boxes. Um, nice Avo box, an Oliva, and um, a uh, H. Upman. This is my favorite box. It's got the best color. Um, it's kind of got. Uh, so these are these are flies that I'm hanging on to for now, and then these are flies from friends. Um, but uh, yeah, they're just um, they're just magnetic, uh, nicely lined with some felt. Great for displaying flies um, in a non permanent permanent way. Um, it's also how I like to transport them because the magnets are strong enough actually to hold the flies in transit. Um, but, uh, you know, without being permanent, without damaging them or, uh, or, you know, scratching or, uh, you know, messing up the feathers, it actually holds them really nicely and securely. So that's nice. All right. So in terms of materials, uh, I'm going to flip the camera around like I, like I did. Um, you'll have to excuse the, uh, slightly dusty mat. Um, this apartment has pretty bad filtration, um, in terms of its HVAC and it, it, it is just dusty. And no matter how many times you wipe it down, air conditioning turns on, it's dusty again. So but let's turn this around. Let's see. There we go. So we'll start out with, um, we're going to start out with, uh, going through the, the machinist chest. Um, I'm not going to be able to show you all of the drawer, all of the contents of all of the drawers, because some of the drawers are rather large. Um, and some of them are rather uninteresting or like repetitive kinds of things. Uh, so this drawer is where I keep all the hooks that I tie with. Um, let's see. And uh, so um, these actually are all uh, not blind eyes. These these boxes are of eyed hooks. Um, then, of course, the partridge hooks that I've been tying on uh, most recently. Uh, I've got some new hooks that I just got in. Uh, these are kind of really tiny number five, um, Harrison Bartleet's, 
Um, I love these small hooks uh, for shows because I can tie, you know, simple flies on them rather quickly. Um, got some gut, of course. Uh, some Ron Lucas hooks, noble peas. Um, some more tiny hooks. Uh, let's see. I, these are just a couple of antique hooks. Um, I think I rescued these. These are rescues from flies that were just kind of falling apart. Um, I got some more partridge. These are modern, modern blind eye, uh, round bend hooks. Um, I use these a lot for, uh, for, uh, Mary Orvis, Mary Orvis Marbury flies. Um, let's see. Got some unknown sprout hooks. Um, I don't actually know what brand or who make these are. I would assume there's something like uh, Mustad or, or, or something similar um, from, you know, like the 1950s or so. <laughs> um, but they came, you know, in an unmarked pack package to me. So I don't, I don't know. These are also great for Mary Arbus Marbury flies, mom flies. Um, some knickknacks. Um, so yeah, this is my hook tray. Um, this is the, uh, yeah. Uh, and I also store, um, when I'm traveling to shows, I also put all of my tools in this um, one. As you can see, there's a little bit of extra space uh, if I pull all the all the hooks to one side. Um, some of the tools also go into another basically empty uh, drawer. Um, so this is not the only drawer for stool, uh, tool storage, but, um, I do put a few tools in here. Uh, the next two drawers are similar um, and used for pretty much the same thing. Uh, I have a drawer for threads and tinsels. Um, these are all vintage tinsels. I have some Legarden tinsel. Um, I do maintain a set of uh, like mono, like uni thread, uh, because I do occasionally tie fishing flies. Um, I also use, uh, especially the black uni thread, um, for mounting flies uh, to, you know, um, cards. If I'm if I'm you know sending them out to customers, uh, that sort of thing. Um, let's see, uh, I have some uni stretch, which is my favorite, uh, underbody material. Although right now, like I've said, I'm using the Vivas, uh, gel spun, um, and then ultra thread. I use 140 and 70 denier ultra thread, uh, the most, um, cause I think, um, it's one of the easiest threads to keep flat when you're wrapping. And then uh, on this side, we have all my um, uh, uh, floss, silk floss. So this is um, uh, Legarten uh, French, uh, which is my favorite brand, um, although I do have some JEC um, Japanese silk. Uh, and then also some, some <laughs> tinsels and, and uh, floss for fishing flies. Um, because that occasionally happens. <clears throat> uh, let's see, and then I have a couple of drawers of dubbing. Um, I have both seal dubbing and then this drawer is a mix of um, mohair and uh, pig's wool, uh, real pig's wool. Um, these were all uh, dyed by Bill Bailey. Um, great uh, uh, using, I would I assume authentic because you get some really nice um, colors that you know you don't see too often. Um, uh, you know in modern dyes, uh, you know, uh, modern um, fly shops. Uh, and then uh, obviously seals, seals fur, because, you know, this is what's called for in a lot of salmon fly patterns. Um, all sorts of colors, um, some of them traditional, some of them not so traditional. Um, 
I, uh, and I've heard um, that this is all from, or mostly from old Russian uh, win army winter coats. Um, they, the old army Russian winter coats were lined with seals fur um, because the Russians. And um, when they surplus them, uh, they just took the liner out, they shaved all the fur off, um, and now we have some very nice authentic seal fur dubbing, which would otherwise be illegal to acquire. Um, seal is one of those things where it's not illegal to own, but it's illegal to acquire it um, from animals. Uh, so the surplus army coats were are a great source, and it's good recycling. Uh, you know, I, I, I've talked about this before. Um, responsible material acquisition oftentimes involves recycling um, and repurposing. So, you know, we'll talk about this a little bit uh, with like skins and things, but um, one of the best, uh, most ethical sources of skins are uh, recycled museum mounts. Um, or taxidermy mounts. Uh, when people want to get rid of their taxidermy, um, you know, oftentimes it's just thrown out. But those uh, taxidermy mounts can still be flattened, and then you know their feather is used for things like this, for like fly tying. So um, that's always a great way to to get some of the more interesting uh, feathers. Now the next drawer I won't be able to put up on the under the camera. Um, but it contains uh, things like uh, kingfisher skins, um, red weaver skin. That one's a little flocked. Um, I've got, you know, pairs of feathers paired up, um, you know, like macaw, like a nice blue macaw there. These are, these are all paired up because if I want to use them for wings, you know, you want a pair, a left and right pair, so that they balance each other in the wing, um, or if you're going to use them for slips, um, uh, you'll want, you know, a left and right slip. Um, some Argus pheasant uh, secondary uh, tail. Um, this is gray parrot tail. This is a this is the substitute that you use for ibis. Ibis is um, pretty illegal here in the United States, so you use gray parrot. Uh, it's a great substitute. It's almost exactly the right color. Um, and then just some staples like uh, golden pheasant uh, neck for tippets and uh, complete crests. These are just hairline. Um, hairline's pretty good. Uh, you might have to pick through a number of different things. So I tend to buy hairline neck and crests in bulk. Um, and by bulk, I mean bulk for me. <laughs> I'm not a, I, like I said, I've, like I said before, I'm not a commercial tire. I don't have the supply chain um, that a professional tire would. Um, so bulk for me is like, I buy five, five of these at a time. Um, and I might be able to use in completion, in completion, two of them. Um, and it'll take me like three or four years to work through an entire crust or an entire uh, neck. Um, other things I have are some paired up, um, these are Himalayan mono or Impeyan uh, neck feathers. Um, I, I am lucky, so I'm not going to show this on camera because it is nicely bagged and it is um, stored away in a, in a bug free box. But I have um, most of a complete Impeyan skin in pieces. Um, and so I was able to pull some very nice neck feathers. Uh, what else do I have in here? Um, some more paired up macaw. These are some very lovely uh, pink macaw. Um, I have some amgold crests. I have both um, crest feathers like this for uh, crests over the wings for toppings and also some that are shorter for tails. Um, these are very beautiful. Uh, so Amgold, uh, Amgold pheasants are a hybrid between Aunt Lady Amherst and golden pheasants.
Yeah, and then just a whole lot more golden pheasant because you uh, almost every pattern calls for a golden pheasant of some sort. Um, so, you know, when you, <laughs> if you're going to buy something in like bulk, and like I said, bulk for me is not, not terribly bulk. Um, but if you're going to buy something in bulk, golden pheasant, crests, and neck are something that you can definitely do with um, because you're going to use it in most of the patterns that you tie in some way. Right, and then the next um, next uh, drawer down, the last drawer, has all of my um, necks. So I have a couple of jungle cock capes, um, some various uh, uh, Chinese or Indian uh, necks. Uh, uh, I also have um, some very nice dry fly necks. Um, these are whiten. Um, I am discovering things that I have that I didn't remember having. Snipe wings. Uh, so for if you're tying the major. Um, I think from Tolfrey, or uh, it's described in some other um, other publications with uh, different uh, materials, but snipe wings. Um, it's kind of a specialist feather. You don't use a lot of this. Um, you can also use them for wet flies though. So uh, that's really nice. Um, let's see, and then some pairs of uh, peacock pheasant. Um, I believe this is gray peacock pheasant, but don't quote me on that. All right, so let me just put this away. Uh, yeah, if you're just coming into the stream, um, uh, I just mentioned uh, mentioned in the beginning, uh, so I'm not going to be able to stream for the next two weeks because um, I'm going to be doing stuff. And uh, and so today I thought we'd do something a little bit different, uh, something that could be standalone. Um, no sense in starting a new fly. Uh, so I'm just doing a material show and tell, um, having fun. I don't often get to, to show off my collection. Um, even though I consider myself an ardent, uh, ardent, uh, feather collector. Uh, and like I said, I'm not going to be able to show everything today just because there's such a massive amount of stuff that I have. Um, and some of it is all nicely, neatly put away in, in boxes, um, now, um, I will get to what's in the top of the machinist chest. So that was everything that's in the drawers of the machinist chest. Um, I think next I'm going to show what I have in the um, file folder that I have uh, as an organizer. Um, and then we'll talk about um, some, we'll talk about the top of the machinist uh, chest, I think. Or we'll do everything that has to happen here on the mat um, first. Uh, just so then I don't, I'm not switching the camera back and forth and making everybody seasick. Um, so next, um, out of the file folder, I have um, turkey, uh, a ton of turkey. Uh, this is um, my favorite heritage turkey, uh, Spanish black, blue slate, and mottled black. Um, nothing, um, I mean, look, they're, they're very nice, uh, um, but, you know, nothing unusual. Um, a whole mess of dyed turkey. Um, you know, every color that you need and a few you don't. Uh, I have um, ostrich. Uh, so this is a this is a gray plume. I believe this is a, from Hairline. Um, I don't know if they still sell ostrich, but um, this was this is just a feather duster gray. But then I also have this wonderful, and you see me use this in a lot in the in my videos. Um, this this very nice um, black dyed ostrich uh, from John McLean at FeathersMC.com. Uh, I also have some dyed um, ostrich, uh, like yellow, red, pink, um, 
blue, but that's um, I, I so very rarely use dyed um, ostrich hurl. Um, mostly when it calls for like a red head uh, on a fly, it's dubbed. Um, peacock wing, uh, a couple, couple things of, um, Cory Bustard, some Argus, uh, wing feather, uh, wing figure, feather segments. This is great. Um, this is a great substitute for, um, uh, golden pheasant if you're tying a larger salmon fly, uh, larger hook size. Um, it's also interesting, just an interesting pattern, um, if you're doing, you know, a, a freestyle wing. Um, and then I have some uh, turkey second, uh, secondary tail feathers. Uh, these are the pre-tail feathers that are um, right in front of the, kind of the, the main tail feathers. And these are great for white tipped um, because, you know, you don't need longer fibers for white, for an underwing, or, unless you're tying a really huge fly. Um, and it, it, it allows you to get more white tip turkey um, out of a tail. Um, and then I have a large amount of turkey. <laughs> Uh, this is all natural turkey of various uh, heritage breeds, um, some Holland, uh, uh, sorry, some slate gray. Um, this is like harvest gold or, you know, what we call Eastern Turkey here in the United States. Um, some zebra, um, uh, and then some bourbon red um, with a little bit of Holland white in there. Uh, there's a pencil palm somewhere in here. Um, one of these packages, and then I have uh, this um, dyed. Uh, this is a uh, dyed um, a floric and bustard substitute from John McLean. This was a this was a prototype. I don't think it ever went into full production. Um, it works well. Um, I think uh, it looks nice in a wing. It, the The base color, this kind of. Um, uh, I guess, I guess it's a bourbon. I'm not entirely certain of the, the the heritage breed that it was dyed over. It's not quite the right color. Um, you know, floric and bustard I think tends to be a little bit more tan or yellow in its base color. Uh, but you know, in a wing, it, it looks pretty good. Um, and so I use it occasionally, uh, especially if I'm if I'm tying something that doesn't require a whole lot of it because it's easier to hide that way. Uh, and then finally, I have uh, macaw tails, uh, blue, uh, blue macaw mostly because that's what you use off most often for horns. A little bit of green macaw because that occasionally gets mixed in. Um, and then I have this is a golden pheasant tail, and I think there's also uh, this is am gold here. Um, so I have, um, but this is some really nice stuff. Again, this is all from John McLean. Um, some of the some of the feathers that I have are from other vendors. Um, but the most consistent supply of these kinds of materials is from John McLean at feathersmc.com. He does not pay me to say that. Um, I'm happy to promote his business because um, I have been buying from John. Oh. For like 12 years now? Am I really that old? Yeah. So over a decade. Um, so yeah, super reliable, consistent supply, which is always useful and good. Um, <clears throat> now in terms of other materials that I use, um, uh, one of the things I often suggest using, um, especially when you're starting out as a new classic Atlantic salmon fly tire, 
is to use substitutes whenever you can. Um, the substitute that I like for seal dubbing, if you cannot find seal dubbing or don't want to uh, dish out for it, is Angora goat dubbing. You can buy these, um, you know, multi-packs. Uh, it has all the colors that you need to get you started. It even has a Highlander green, which is pretty credible. It's not great, but it's pretty close. Um, you get, you know, a couple of reds. Um, the blue is useful uh, for, um, not for classic flies, but if you do like a freestyle, I love this color blue. Um, it has even has a claret, which is great. Uh, so yeah, so these waspy dubbing packs um, are, are great for beginners. Um, if you're just looking t for something that is, you know, and the thing, nice thing about this is if you buy this and you decide you don't want to tie classic Atlantic salmon flies, you can of course use this to tie steelhead uh, flies. <clears throat> um, the colors are great for steelhead, um, for, you know, pike or bass flies. Um, can't go wrong with this. And then if you're looking for feathers, there are a couple of different sources that you should consider. Um, you know, especially if you're looking for bulk. Um, now I need to put these in a, in a, in a better bag, in a better container, but um, these are craft, craft store uh, guinea fowl, uh, uh, you know, body and neck feathers. Um, and one of the things that I've noticed, and I don't know why this is, but if I go to say, you know, my local fly shop and I buy hairline product or, you know, whoever is selling guinea fowl feathers, um, for whatever reason, it's, it seems that in terms of, um, let me grab, a, grab an example out of here. So in classic, Classic Atlantic salmon flies, uh, when they call for guinea um, or galena is what it's sometimes called, uh, they they're asking for these the the speckled. Uh, so you can see how it's got the large spots, but then in between it looks kind of um, frosted almost or speckly. Um, they're not usually calling for the, the big spots with the plain back, black background. Um, and for some reason, whenever I pick up like a hairline dubbing pack or, you know, whatever brand, store brand, if it's Orvis, um, there's just no speckled feathers, like hardly any. Um, but whenever I go, you know, and this, this is, this is from my local craft store, Mike, uh, uh, Michael's. Um, there's a there's a fair number of speckled feathers, you know, in this bag. Um, entirely usable. Uh, I don't know why that is. Um, I don't know if the, uh, the feather companies are cheating us out of the, uh, the speckled feathers, but there it is. <laughs> um, uh, I find that in terms of um, usable hackle feathers, I get a much better deal from craft store uh, feather packs. Um, and the other source of feathers that I suggest is if you have a friend who is a hunter. Um, so these, uh, these teal feathers um, came from a gentleman who I've gotten to know from the show uh, scene. Um, he Every year, he, he comes up to me as, uh, with a bag of feathers and, and hands me a bag of, of various duck feathers, and I appreciate the heck out of it because, um, one, these are super nice feathers, and two, they're super useful. You know, you use teal in, side, in Atlantic salmon flies all the time for sides. Um, sometimes they're even married into wings. Uh, so these are incredibly useful. If you have a friend who's a waterfowl hunter, hit him up for those flank feathers, um, for, you know, if you're tying, tying Mary Orvis Marbury feathers, you know, you get those wing coverts from mallards. Um, uh, you can do some really interesting things with the mallard, with the green uh, drake mallard head feathers, uh, pintail uh, wing coverts, um, of course, flank, um, wood duck, of course, is incredibly useful. 
so yeah, um, friends who are water, waterfowl hunters are a great resource. Um, even can Canadian goose, like the wing coverts, you can dye them. Sure, they have a little bit of a gray tin underneath, but you can dye them um, and use them for wet fly wings. Uh, and the thing is, is like most waterfowl hunters, their bag limits are large enough that, you know, they'll be happy to give you the feathers. Um, and most, you know, the feathers would go to waste. Uh, you, I would suggest offering to pluck them yourself uh, just so that, you know, you're not making extra work for them. Um, but it, this is a great, that's a great source of, um, of duck feathers. Uh, duck and uh, goose feathers for fly tying. Um, and then one other thing that I wanted to show is just uh, what I call my hook collection. Uh, these are all hooks that I eventually intend to tie on, um, but I am saving them for that, you know, special fly. Um, we'll start with, um, and I've just been saving them in these, in these bags. Uh, so these are um, some examples of kind of antique uh, antique hooks, which I would consider mostly suitable for um, Mary Orvis Marbury flies. Uh, and then I have a separate bag, because everything's neatly organized, of hooks, of antique salmon fly hooks. Um, so we have some Harrison celebrated Dublin limericks, uh, William Bartley, uh, Noble, um, Ner Noble. Uh, um, this is a hollow, hollow ground point. Um, uh, Millward and Sons. Sorry, probably not great on the block background, but some very nice uh, antique hooks there. And then I have um, some from contemporary makers. Uh, I think, you know, um, and I, I say I'm going to tie on these. I probably won't because I definitely consider the modern uh, artisanal hook makers to be kind of an art form in and of itself. Uh, so this is a Eugene Sunday, Sunday Bartley. Um, it's a beautiful hook. Um, love it. Uh, these are some Ron Reinhold hooks. I, I've just left these in their package, but. Um, kind of, you can kind of see it through the package there. Noblesse, and then a very long shanked uh, uh, limerick, four and a quarter inch shank, six aught limerick hook. Um, I don't think I know what I would do with this hook, <laughs> but um, it, it's a very interesting hook to have. Um, let's see. So this is Ron Reinhold Gold Label. Um, And then this is a really interesting hook. This is from um, Dave Paris. Um, and he had an interesting idea about how to reduce the mass or, or the bulk um, at the head of a fly. And so he, um, I'll take this hook out to show actually. Um, and he's probably not the inventor, but he definitely took it to it's kind of logical conclusion with this super, let me just get a good background here. So this kind of super, I guess you'd call it a taper, but it's not really even a taper. It's like a reduction in thickness, like a, a sudden reduction in thickness at the head portion where you would tie the fly. Um, this, uh, this hook is also interesting for the fact that it's barbless, uh, which is kind of unusual, um, but, this is a really nice hook. It's a, a very unusual in terms of um, style. Um, so that is the hook collection. Like I said, I do intend to tie in all of these, but they are pretty just to look at, just as they are. Um, so unlikely unlikely to find a project worthy of tying on those hooks, but um, there is, there's is that intention.
All right, so just package these all back up. Um, and then finally, I will show you what I have in the top um, of the uh, machinist chest. One second. Oh, right. So in the top of the machinist chest, um, I have large bulk feathers. Uh, so I have them organized in bags. I'm not going to take everything out of a bag, but this is all guinea um, duck flank that I would consider using for hackle, um, J feathers. I have a massive bag of all of my chicken hackle. Um, this is all the strung chicken hackle as opposed to the the stuff that's um, still on the, the, the skin, the necks. Uh, I do have some schloppen. I don't use schloppen as much as I used to. Um, but I have quite a bit of it. So one of these days, I suppose I ought to use it, but um, I, I just don't use flopping. It's too webby for me um, for the style of fly that I like to tie. Uh, I know some people like it because it, it does give that kind of more substantial buggier appearance, but it's just um, the way I tie, it's not as useful to me. Um, goose... Um, a uh, whole bunch of goose. Uh, these are like wing coverts um, for from uh, that have been dyed. Uh, use these for wings on smaller flies and Mary Oliver's Marbury flies. Then these are all my duck flank, which I keep for things like sides and mallard roofs. Um, these are the kind of the, like the nice pairs of feathers. Uh, keep them separate from the ones that I would consider, you know, suitable for hackles. Um, and that's it. Um, other than my business cards. <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, so that was most of my feather collection. Like I said, not everything um, because, you know, some of it is nicely packaged away in boxes, especially the stuff that I don't use very often. Um, I also have a couple of full skins um, from, like, pheasants and things that are just too big to bring on the camera here um, and pull out of their boxes. Uh, and, you know, I do, I do use, um, I do pluck or take feathers from those skins uh, to use in fly tying. Um, I like having skins because you can choose pairs more easily. Uh, so I have like a Swinho pheasant skin. Um, the other thing is, is a lot of those um, skins when they came to me uh, were in pieces. And so they're not very conducive to taking out their boxes without making a giant mess. Uh, um, and then I have a couple of boxes of just random feathers. So one of the things that I did really early in my fly tying career, even before I started tying Atlantic salmon flies, was I got, um, I went around to like local pet shops and I just collected feathers from those pet shops, you know, from the, the birds that have been, that shed them. And so I have, you know, a couple bags full of random feathers. Uh, You've actually seen some of them in, in this because I was able to make some pairs, especially out of the macaw feathers. Uh, but a lot of the feathers are just kind of random or they're like, you know, parakeet neck feathers, which you can use as like sides or cheeks um, in uh, freestyle flies. Um, but, you know, you're not going to be using them so much in uh, classic flies. But I've, but as I said, um, if you're starting out in classic Atlantic salmon flies and you want a less expensive way to start, what I suggest is 
taking a classic um, pattern, such as like a Black Doctor, and let's say in in, in the Black Doctor, I would um, it calls for you know a Buster. Uh, let's say you don't have Corey Buster. Well, that's okay. Uh, just substitute in uh, model turkey. Uh, if you don't have black silk floss, um, you know, use rayon if you have it. Uh, it won't quite look. It's a little too shiny, in my opinion. Um, but, uh, you know, you, you can use rayon or if you want, um, substitute whatever color you have. Uh, you know, let's say you don't have black floss, but you could, but you do have um, magenta floss. Uh, uh, that would be a very bright fly, but you could make a magenta doctor. Um, and that's a, you know, make whatever substitutions you need. Uh, if you don't have um, an Indian crow substitute, um, I would not use suggest using real Indian crow. Um, substitute that if you can um, to begin with. Uh, but if you don't have a good analog or a good substitute, then just use, you know, a red parakeet feather. Or if you're doing, uh, you know, if you're sub already substituting the body color, you know, to continue our example, if you're making a magenta doctor, well, then use a purple parakeet body feather for your tail veiling instead of, you know, a, a red one. Um, and that's a really good way to practice with um, making classic Atlantic salmon flies, uh, but using materials that you already have. Um, so you don't need to go out and purchase things right away. Now, if there are a few things that I wouldn't recommend purchasing right off the bat, um, this is kind of devolving into a how to get started discussion, but I think it's a good one to have every time you pull out materials. Um, like I said, Angora goat dubbing, great substitute uh, for seal. But um, if there are some authentic materials, I would suggest buying right off the bat. It would be golden pheasant crests. You can substitute golden pheasant tippets, but you know you can buy those um, pretty much anywhere still. But golden pheasant crests are something that really can't sub. Um, and if you're going to be substituting golden pheasant crests, you're going to be inevitably substituting with another pheasant's crest. Um, and golden pheasant crests are by far more um, available, I think, than most other pheasants. Um, Maybe Lady Amherst pheasants, especially the dyed ones, um, might be equally uh, available. But golden pheasant, Lady Amherst crests don't work as well as golden pheasant crests. Um, they're a little bit more difficult to tie. They have a little less curvature. Um, so, you know, golden pheasant crest is something that you will need right off the bat. Um you don't need blind eye hooks. You can tie on eyed hooks. You can tie on, you know, a one or two odd or three odd um, eyed salmon hook, up eyed salmon hook. Uh, uh, and I think the other thing that I would not substitute would be um, uh, peacock, uh, not peacock curl. Well, peacock curl and um, ostrich curl. Uh, again, those are readily available. Um, if it really comes down to it, you could buy like a ostrich ostrich um, feather duster, and you have a lifetime supply of duster gray ostrich curl. Uh, peacock readily available local fly shop, um, or go to your local craft store. Get peacock um, peacock eyes. Uh, I you know, um, peacock sword feathers I get from my craft store now. Um, I don't, they're way overpriced at like an Orvis. Uh, so get those from your craft store. Anything else I would not substitute. Um, there are some things I feel like you don't need to substitute. So like uh, duck flank. So um, bronze mallard, teal, those are readily available. You shouldn't need to substitute those, but you can. Um, uh, and, if, and in fact, you've seen me use like pintail or gadwell instead of teal all the time. Um, they're a little bit different. They do lend a little bit of a different appearance, but perfectly usable.
You know, other than that, been a trip through most of my feather collection. Um, if there's anything else you want to see out of my collection, um, that was most of it. So there's not much more to show. Uh, but um, if you're interested in uh, anything else about materials, let me know. Um, other than that, thanks for hanging out. Um, we'll be back to tying. Um, not So no stream for the next two weeks. Uh, again, just not going to be able to stream. Uh, so I guess that means what? June, look at that calendar, June 13th will, I think, be the next stream, um, or next day that I could stream, um, depending on what's going on, um, we'll see, uh, again, um, there are changes going on at my work, uh, which may change my schedule, um, on rather short notice, uh, the transition has been going, taking a little bit longer than expected, but um, it's going to happen. Uh, so um, I might Saturday or back to Saturday. I would like that very much, um, but uh, we shall see um, when that happens. Uh, other than that, um, thanks for hanging out. Um, as always, if you want to be informed of streams or see more of my work, uh, you can uh, follow me on Instagram at justwondering.brad. And if you want to purchase any of the flies that you've seen me tie on stream, um, you can check out, see what's available on my Etsy shop, Studio 1213 on Etsy. Uh, thanks for hanging out, um, and I'll see you in a couple weeks.